If you have been prescribed a CO125 test, then this video is for you. Many people often think that CA of CO125 is a short form of cancer. I will give you the right answer. Also, I'll give you two clean pointers on CO125 from my own experience as doctor. Many people spend sleepless nights worrying when they hear about CO125, often associating it with cancer. A Google search on CO125 can further lead to anxiety and restlessness, as many believe that a high CO125 level always indicates cancer. However, it is important to understand that cancer cannot be diagnosed solely based on high CO125 level. Conversely, a normal CO125 level does not always mean the cancer is absent. What CO125 actually is? The CA in CO125 stands for carbohydrate antigen. The world first learned about CO125 from a research paper published in 1981 by Dr. Robert Best Jr. in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. Professor Best, now a renowned scientist at MD Anderson Cancer Center at the University of Texas, discovered this chemical after years of research on mouses with ovarian cancer. Already, science was craving for a blood test to diagnose ovarian cancer where symptoms can frequently mislead a patient. C125 seemed to be that answer. Despite the heavy dose of confusion and anxiety surrounding C125, its discovery is undeniably a remarkable fit in medical history. How confusion started? Misunderstanding started to unfold when a few years later, it was found that many non-cancer, that means benign conditions, can also cause elevated C125 levels. Conditions such as cirrhosis of liver, jaundice, kidney failure, heart ailments, and various non-cancer gynecological issues can all result in high C125 levels. In some cases, the rise in C125 is temporary, such as with uterine fibroids, abdominal infection, and even during pregnancy. C125 levels can also fluctuate with menstruation, none of which are cancer. Life would be simpler if C125 levels were a definitive indicator of gynecological cancer. It would be a lifesaver if normal value could definitely tell the doctor that it is all good. However, research by Dr. Funston in 2021 showed that in up to 26% of ovarian cancer cases, the C125 levels remain normal despite the presence of cancer. Can we not just forget C125? Why don't we find an alternative good body chemical which tells us the diagnosis to investigate gynecological problems? Despite rigorous research, no other chemical markers has yet replaced CO125 in medical practice. Therefore, CO125 remains and will remain a king marker, pun intended, in medical textbooks with its own unique importance. It reminds us that sometimes having something is better than having nothing. Let me help you here. Let's clear the air and understand two basic practical pointers for the C125 test. Number one, an increased C125 level does not automatically mean the cancer has been diagnosed. Number two, in complex diseases, a raised C125 level almost never comes down on its own. Shh, imagine someone has cancer and a raised C125. In this case, without anti-cancer chemo or surgery, C125 does not decrease. These two points may not make immediate sense to you. But if you have real dilemma with C125, come back and rewind these two points. It will help you a lot. What top medical bodies say about C125 then? Due to the confusion and anxiety related to the C125 test, even London's Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists has issued messages of caution. They have warned that no one should diagnose cancer based on C125 report alone. In fact, no cancer specialist will ever diagnose cancer solely based on C125 levels. They emphasized this in their green top guidelines number 34. Specifically, they said, while a very high value may assist in reaching a diagnosis, 
a normal fellow does not exclude ovarian cancer due to the non-specific nature of this test. Clearly, even the Royal College agrees that C125 test is non-specific. There is therefore need for very clear communication. The test is still being conducted because there are tons of benefits of testing C125. Unfortunately, due to a lack of communication between doctors and patients and a lack of patient awareness, the benefits of the C125 test are often overshadowed by anxiety. Remember, C125 should only be tested when necessary. Recently, I have seen people getting C125 tests as a part of health check packages without specific reasons. More examples are around. An 18-year-old girl with period troubles due to PCOS and irregular periods was recommended a C125 test. After the test, she searched online, lost sleep and worried her whole family. The person who recommended the test was not even a doctor and did not explain what C125 was. Doing this test for films reasons can lead to psychological anxiety. A single instance of unnecessary C125 testing may trigger to multiple unnecessary tests or even invasive procedures like laparoscopy to find the reason of the raised C125 level. I'm not sure if any other blood test has received so much of attention for causing mental anxiety. In the case of C125, it has been researched in multiple papers. Unnecessary anxiety by the patient must be in control. If a patient becomes too anxious about the test, the resulting stress may even lower the efficacy of the immune cells, such as natural killer cell activities. Clear medical communication is vital. When a woman is prescribed a C125 test, the doctor must explain the risks and the reasons. Equally, it is also the patient's responsibility to ask the doctor why the test is being given. Just saying I do not understand medical science is not enough. After all, it is your own health in question. Effective communication between doctors and patients is essential for better gynecological health and reduced stress. Can a little raise C125 report be ignored? No, we cannot always. Complexity on C125 interpretation is here to stay for next 25 years at least. We have to be matured enough to understand the implications. It is true that many cases of raised C125 will not be a cancer. Can we use that comment for every case? If we frequently state that a raised C125 level does not always mean cancer, can a doctor reassure a patient with a raised C125 by saying, oh, that is nothing, you do not have cancer. Unfortunately, no doctor can provide such false reassurance because science demands accuracy. Over reassurance or false reassurance must be strictly avoided. If a doctor says, oh, you have a slightly raised you on 25, it is nothing. The patient might spread this misinformation to her neighbors and friends and colleagues, potentially putting other members of society at risk. One day, that neighbor will ignore raised C125 and the outcome may be catastrophic. What do we recommend then? As doctors, we always advise patients to discuss their C125 test results in detail with their doctor. Understand why the test was needed, what the results mean and what steps to take if the levels are raised or normal. Relying solely on Google searches can be inconveniently misleading. It is not uncommon to find Google search results for C125 that are influenced by business interests. Google searches may trick you to go to advertising doctors or hospitals who have paid Google to appear at the top of the search results. A recent video analysis by Mr. Who is the Boss can open your eyes on this. Link below. Instead of relying on impersonal internet resources, consult your own doctor who knows your medical history. When visiting the doctor, take a friend or family member with you to help remember the information. Anxiety can affect your memory, so having someone with you makes it easier to discuss what the doctor explained once you get home. We will soon publish tips for visiting a gynecological clinic on this channel. Stay subscribed for the notifications. To summarize, the C125 test is not just an average test. 
It requires responsibility from the patient, the doctor and the laboratory conducting the test and from the family members too in supporting the patient. The C125 test developed over years of research demands sincere responsibility and quality communication. Patient education is vital. You need to understand why the C125 test is done and when it should not be done. It is important to spread awareness about such tests. C125 and similar tests are known as tumor markers, representing significant achievements in medical science. Along with C125, other diagnostic tools like ultrasound scan, CT, MRI, PET scan, biopsy, and sometimes laparoscopy are used to diagnose cancer. Tissue samples from the abdomen have to be used under a microscope to confirm or refute a cancer diagnosis. Blood tests like C125 can raise or lower the suspicion of cancer but cannot diagnose cancer on its own. However, C125 can be of immense value in helping doctors and patients decide the next steps of treatment or diagnosis. If your C125 level is raised, please follow it with your doctor's advice for treatment, whether it involves medication, surgery or other procedures. However, do not lose sleep over baseless anxiety. If you have more questions, please write them down in the comments. We will try to answer them. If you want a printed list of conditions that can raise you on 25 levels, please fill out the forms below and we will be sending it to you to your email address with an invitation to join our little community. Before I conclude, this video is for those who are prescribed a C125 test to investigate an ongoing ovarian cyst or tumor. This video is not for those already diagnosed or treated for ovarian cancer. We will create a separate video for confirmed ovarian cancer cases to discuss their C125 trends. That's all today. See you soon over another research article. Thank you.